welcome back to another session. So this time we want to talk with you about main differences between living on land and living in the water. Well, there's a few obvious ones, but a few other ones you might not have thought about just yet. So we are in Murta in Croatia right now and one of the main differences that everyone will understand right away when it comes to living in land or living in the water is underwater obviously it's wet. On land usually dry unless it rains and then it's fresh water. So below the sea there's a few things that change dramatically and the most important one is that everything is much more stable. So that means temperatures change much slower than on land so the air temperature can switch 10, 20 degrees within a short period of time, water holds the temperature a lot longer. So it takes a longer time to cool down and a longer time to warm up. Everybody who ever wanted to go swimming in the lake or in the sea will know that it takes a few weeks for the water to warm up. Now, that is just one. The other one when it comes to stability is really the stability of the substrate. So at sea or underwater, you have lots of organisms, be it algae or living like animals, that grow on solid underground, like rocks, the actual coast, or just artificial structures like anchors that have been drowned, or even ghost nets and other things can be used. But the key factor for that to happen is that it has to be stable. So if you were an algae and you grow on top of a small rock, you have to be sure that this rock doesn't get flipped over within the next hours. So that means that a small rock can be incredibly stable if it's deep enough. If a small rock is far out on the shoreline, it will get flipped with every other wave. So that's something you would not want if you were to grow on it. On land, you don't really have that issue. Wind has to be incredibly strong to even move a rock. It doesn't matter if it's small or big, but obviously bigger is always more stable. Underwater, even more so. And that is mostly because of the very nature of water. In the open air, I can move my hand like this, no issue. Underwater, it gets a lot more difficult. So there's a lot more resistance, which also means if the water is moving, it has a lot more force in it. Which is also part of the reason why a boat needs a lot more fuel to move than, for example, a car. Now, this changes a lot because underwater we can also have sessile animals, which means animals that are actually grown onto the ground, to the rock, to a cave, to whatever substrate they might choose as suitable for them. On land, if you ever think about it, is there any sessile animals on land? Short answer, no. And that's simply because of those special features of water. So. Because it is so dense, it also has the ability to carry stuff around. And that stuff is mostly plankton. Well, nowadays also a lot of plastic, unfortunately. But plankton basically defines everything that cannot actively swim against the current. So everything that moves with the wind, with the streams, with the currents of the ocean. And this basically is the base of every food pyramid, every food chain that you will see anywhere in the water. But because the water can transport that, it also means that animals can afford the luxury of not moving at all and just sitting there, stretching out their arms or pushing water through their body in order to filter out all these nutrients, all these animals, algae, whatever they might be feeding on. This, on land, 
is absolutely impossible. Yet another thing that water does incredibly well is the transport of sound. So we mentioned it does transport nutrients pretty well and all the other things, but also sound travels incredibly well underwater. That means this noise was about a meter away from me on the open air and I could hear it. Underwater sounds travel for miles and miles or kilometers and kilometers. So basically, whales can come, have conversations across hundreds of kilometers, simply because sound travels so incredibly well. This year, for the first time, we have a hydrophone with us, which is a microphone that's specially made for the use of, well, for the use underwater. And even with that, we could already hear motorboats coming long before we could see them. Now, sound traveling easy comes obviously with plus and a minus. On the plus side, yes, whales can have easy conversations over long distances, so can dolphins and every other animal that's working on an acoustic system. It also means that a sonar sort system works, not just for military, but also for animals that use a sonar sort of organ to basically sound, send out a sound signal and they know where they are or they know what the environment looks like from the echo, like dolphins do. Also for boaters, super incredible because we can just send the sound signal down to the bottom and from the echo we know how deep the water is. And that works to 100 meters depth. On the air, not that easy. That's why we use optics for measuring distance on land. So on the flip side, that also means that sound pollution becomes an issue. Sound pollution being, well, basically the unintentional spreading of different sounds. That means if you are an animal that depends on sound as your primary means of knowing where you are, every other sound will distract you. And looking around in Croatia, for example, there is lots of boats out there. Every engine makes a noise, every prop just turning in the water and having the resistance on the blades, it's incredibly noisy. So have a listen to this. Now, with all that in mind, all these sounds from all these boats travel really far and that just makes the underwater world a very noisy environment, especially in the high season in the Mediterranean. So also something to keep in mind next time you talk about pollution in the sea, it doesn't stop with plastic, it doesn't stop with oil, it also extends out to the sounds. And finally, one other major difference is the way that light travels. So we are land lovers. We are made and designed to live on land and we do so incredibly well. Our main sensors are optical. We use the eyes for most of our orientation. So we look at things, we know how far away they are. It, it works great. Underwater, it's not quite as easy. Yes, sometimes you do have crystal clear waters and you can see 40, 50 meters far. But if you think about it, 40, 50 meters is really not a lot. Just imagine being in a foggy environment on land. So you can just barely see across the soccer field and that's it. So this is basically the everyday life in the water. On a lucky day, you might see 40, 50 meters far. On an unfortunate day, your visibility might be limited to this. So that makes a big difference. And that's why many animals, be it fish, be it sea slugs, be it, well, marine mammals like dolphins, they have developed other means to find their way through that environment. So optics are usually a backup, 
but they have lots of other senses that they can rely on if they need to fly blind, swim blind, dive blind. So even if they don't see, they will find their way around. And as a matter of fact, there is actually fish out there that don't have eyes at all, but they are made for caves, for deep sea, and they simply rely on completely different senses. On land, if you think about it, any animals that don't have eyes at all, not so common, huh? So, where does it leave us? It basically means we have a few very distinct differences between life on land and life in the water. As simple as that. All the animals, all the plants, all the life around it has clearly developed in a way that it can survive in that particular environment. And really, where it gets incredibly interesting once again, is the coastline. So the area where the sea and the land meet. But about that, we're gonna have a whole episode just specifically for that because there is a lot more than the eye might see in the first sight. If you look a little bit closer and dig a little bit deeper, you will find a lot of life, even in those incredibly harsh environments. So for now, I hope that this all made sense to you. If you have any questions, any particular suggestions or answers you're seeking for the next future episodes, let us know in the comments down below. And thank you very much for watching. Please do share, hit that like and subscribe button if you want to see more of this kind of content and we appreciate your follow. See you next time, bye.